Friends, today is an incredibly exciting day on the show. If you remember last week, we were in the stunning Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. Today, we have traveled to Pitkin County, otherwise known as Aspen or the Colorado Rockies. And we came here to drive the 2016 Kia Optima, actually a couple different Kia Optimas. And I know it looks just like the car it replaces, but well, what's different is everything. So why don't you and I go through a tech review while we work on the full episode, and let's start with where we usually start, and that is the engine. Now, for 2016, uh, Kia puts on offer three different direct-injected four-cylinder engines, and it's somewhat confusing, if you ask me, because the biggest engine is actually the base engine. There's the smallest engine, which is like the middle-of-the-road option, and then there's still a smaller engine, well, I guess bigger than the middle engine, for the high-performance option. So let's go through all of the different derivations. It starts with a 2.4-liter four-cylinder uh, that puts out 178 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque. Uh, then you move up, I guess down, to a 1.6 liter four-cylinder turbo engine. Now that is the same engine that you and I drove in the Hyundai Sonata Eco last year. You need to check out that episode because we had a very unusual way in learning about the, the, the benefits of that smaller engine in a bigger car. But in this case, it puts out 178 horsepower, but really what's interesting about that engine is 195 pound-feet of torque, which comes in at a kind of stupidly low 1500 RPM. Hint, that's what makes the 1.6 probably the engine to have in the range. Uh, then we move up to the 2-liter direct-injected turbo, which this is, and this is like the powerhouse at 245 horsepower, but it puts out 260 pound-feet of torque at an even lower 1,350 RPM. Now, that's all great and all, but what is it connected to in terms of transmission? Now, the transmissions change with the engines. So there is a six-speed in the base car, the 2.4, and a six-speed in this car. But if you remember in the Sonato Eco episode, that has a seven-speed dual clutch. So basically, it bookends with a torque converter, so high and low, and in the middle of the road car, it gets a dual clutch engine. Now let's press on to the bits that affect driving dynamics. And it's not the usual, well, we got McPherson struts here, and we got a multi-link in the back here. It's actually the way the car is constructed. So like the wheelbase is, is longer, but it's like by that much. And then the width, they take a page out of the, uh, the Pontiac booklet, and they add an inch to the width of the vehicle. But really the changes that are interesting is the way the car is constructed. So in today's day and age, you can have a car made of aluminum or aluminum in different parts of the world, steel, high strength steel, carbon fiber. Well, they kind of did a bit of everything here. So there's actually 50% more high strength steel in the 2016 model. Sounds great, right? Uh, well, that translates to 150% stiffer vehicle. Now that's great. But, you know, you and I are car guys, and me in particular, I'm a Lotus guy, so I get excited about the way they build Lotus. Um, and the way they build the Lotus is they glue pieces together. They use adhesive. Well, guess what? Kia is very proud of the fact that they are using adhesive 450% more. So it's not just the high-strength steel that aids to the stiffer uh, car. It's the construction of the vehicle itself. But wait, there is more. Now, are you like me where I like open top cars, but I like going on track days? And that generally means you can't have a sunroof or you can't have a convertible. Well, here they have the panoramic roof, but what they've done is the actual structure of the whole roof, which I'll admit adds a little bit of weight, uh, it's now made of plastic that is reinforced with carbon fiber. A Kia with carbon fiber. Now, I think what we need to do is press on to the Kia bits, and that is the interior. So to understand the interior, I think we need to understand that there are five different levels on offer here. Basically, there's two LXs, there's an EX, there's an SX, and there's an SXL. Now, this one is the SX, and this is pretty fancy. Like, it's borderline Korean Cadillac. Uh, the front seat's heated and cooled, the rear seat heated, uh, the steering wheel is heated. For 2016, the, the lights, they're not only HID, but they actually steer, first time in a Kia Optima. 
Um, but really, there's a couple of other interesting things they did here. Like this one's got power seats, but if you go for like the base model, they actually have a height adjustable passenger seat. That's a neat touch you don't really see on Asian cars, even fancy Asian cars. Um, but really, the thing that they've been focusing on here is the design. Now, if you saw our, uh, our Hyundai Pebble Beach episode with uh, Peter Schreier, the man who is the president of Hyundai and Kia and chief design officer, he really spent a lot of time talking about their overall trying to mature design for Hyundai and Kia. And if you look at the exterior of Hyundai's, they have done that. But here they've kind of stuck with the original design that made this car so popular. But the interior, that's where you see the maturity. Uh, and really there's a couple things going on here. If you look at like the grades of materials they use in here, they tried to bring it up a couple levels. And in some areas it's successful, like here and here and here, it actually is a, a better place to be. But the top of the dash, both the shape and the use of the materials, not great in my opinion. Like uh, the, the, the previous gen Kia Optima had this very cool, very German driver oriented dash, which I thought was about perfection. If you think about when Peter came over from Audi, you can see where that was coming from in terms of German inspiration. But here it's more of a shared, uh, more like almost hipster way here of a dashboard. Uh, but really, this is, I would say this is almost like Camaro Gen 5 itis in that the plastic isn't terrible, it's just too much of it. Now, I spoke to one of the engineers, and they say that this stitching here is actually real. I don't think it's real here, but I do think it's real here. Uh, and then, of course, you've got your, you know, your fair share of telematics. They, they call it Uvo in Kias. And basically, that's like, you know, the, the Ford Sync system or the GM system. Uh, and basically, there's a lot of things that go with it. But there are two things that are interesting, and it falls under the heading of, you know, kids today, uh, the old saying is that they always play with their phone. That's because they can't have any fun with their parents' cars anymore, because now it has geofencing and curfew alerts. So if they go too far or stay out too late, their parents will know. But really put all that aside, because what you and I are excited about is stuff like Android Auto, uh, which we play around with in a Hyundai and Apple CarPlay, so whatever your, fav your flavor is here. Uh, now, we actually played in Hyundai with both of these, but really extensively in the, in the streets of LA with Android Auto. Well, this car is going to be like the first Kia with either one on offer. They're saying it's coming. It won't be in the first ones, but they say it is coming. So really, this is kind of where the future is going. Forget about the Uvo or however fancy they make it. It's really the fact that, you know, a couple of guys that founded a company in the 70s that had beers and didn't wear shoes to their garage office and then a couple of guys that uh, had a research project at Stanford University not but 18 years ago are controlling the dashboard of your car. Really think about that. Now let's go back to car stuff and let's talk about design. So about that design. You know Kia, they've been a funny company over the past five, eight years. What was it? eight years ago, six years ago, that uh, Peter Schreier came around and he brought out the Kia Sportage and basically that was his announcement to the car world saying, we ain't taking shit from nobody. And then he followed up with this Kia Optima, what was that, five years ago, and it was a much bigger segment. It's like they were fighting in a bigger pond. They were trying to become a bigger fish in the proverbial bigger pond. And now here we are in 2015 and let's be honest, that don't look much different. It's a totally new car, but it don't look much different. Yeah, the, the front is different, the C-pillar is different, the lights are different, it's got a fancier interior. But Kia, they've, they've kind of conditioned us to expect like life-changing designs every five years. Now Hyundai, well, they've gone a bit of a different direction, especially last year with the Sonata in saying, you know what? We're not going to slap you across the face anymore and say, hey, look at me. Instead, they're going with a more mature design because people take them very seriously. Where it wasn't that long ago, again, five, eight years ago, that people bought Kias because they couldn't afford more or they couldn't get financed on more. Uh, and now people buy Kias because, you know what? After seeing cars like that, I want a Kia. So I'm going to leave you guys with a question. Is that enough of a design change coming from a company that's been so innovative in design over the past five, eight years. And really the question is not, do you like it or you don't like it? I wanna know what do you like, what don't you like, and most importantly, what you would change. 
Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, one word, Moto Man TV, one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, and until next time, I am going to figure out a way to spend way more time in Aspen, Colorado.